Well, let's still stay with health. The EN Nose and Throat Department of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital is receiving support from foreign partners in improving speech and language therapy. Head of the EN Nose and Throat Department, Dr. Emmanuel Donukiche, is encouraged about the exercise. This is the fourth time the group is visiting the country. The annual exercise, which began in year 2008, is to help improve speech and language therapy for those who needed it in the country. This time around, 14 students from the Teacher College of Columbia University in New York are involved in the exercise. I think that um, we saw a, a wonderful situation here in which the family members could take the recommendations that we gave them and implement them in the home, which is the most important thing. The group is looking at improving cleft palate, stroke, Down syndrome, voice impairment, hearing loss, and language delay situation in patients. I really feel that we are making a difference in the patients that we see here. We give them clear, simple, but important recommendations that they can do with their families when they get home. Head of Ear, Nose and Throat Department, Dr. Emmanuel Donu Kicha, gave an insight onto the importance of the exercise in the ENT department. The ENT unit had a vision about uh, speech and therapy, language therapy input. Their arrival has sort of catalyzed and further strengthened this direction. Head of Plastic and Reconstruction Department, Dr. Albert Pencil, says this year's exercise is timely. The interesting thing about our relationship with this group is the fact that we as the clinicians, we have also benefited. We talked a few techniques and uh, when we see these patients and their parents, because they are mostly children, we are able to tell them what to do. The group is hopeful of assisting both adults and children with communication disorders stemming from cleft palate, damaged vocal cords, and cerebral palsy. Well, so joining us in the studios right now to get more insight into well, language therapy, speech disabilities, and the like is uh, Miriam Baigori. She's a clinical director, teacher at the College Columbia University. Well, she joins us with one of her students, Christina Lam. A very good afternoon. Thanks for joining us good at good TV3. Thank you. Good Your afternoon. first time here in Ghana? No, it's nice to my fourth time Your fourth time and it's your first, first time. time yes. Interesting. Well, let's get to business now. Now, how important is such a project for Ghana? I think it's very important. We've seen a lot of people who do or are making great changes in the, the disability movement. So we met great teachers and doctors and parents who are seeking services, but yet there's a big stigma associated with disabilities. So there are a lot of people who still think that a child with disabilities ha is um, contagious or that there's been a curse placed on the family or that it's the mother's fault and we know that is not true and so there still needs to be a lot of awareness and sensitivity so that these children can be accepted in society. Well, uh, just before I go to Christine, let me just find out from you now, what are some of the stories you've heard about children with disabilities that are so touching to you? Um, we've heard from families who feel that um, when they, their child was born and they saw the child had a physical defect that they were going to die. They felt that there was a curse placed on them, that the mother, it was, she was not a good mother. And then, um, then bring her the education, telling them that no, it's not their fault, that it's not a curse, that there are children in the United States who also have disabilities and um, it's something that could, they can receive intervention for. Christina, that's, that's interesting. Uh, that's Miriam, that's interesting. Let me go to Christina now. You are a student and you are partaking in this exercise. Yes. What have you learned so far? Oh, where do I start? Um, Ghana has been such an amazing experience. We've worked in the hospitals and the doctors and the staff there have been so generous with their time and their knowledge. We got to watch a live surgery um, and it was an experience we couldn't get in the States and that's been such a crucial part of our work here because we've learned so much from the people here, from the experts that just bring in so much knowledge. And like Miriam was saying, there's the children with disability here are treated um, so well in the unit schools where there are quality teachers. And that's something that's been so impressive to us, watching the work of the unit schools being developed in Ghana. Now, Christine, you as students, how important is this for you in your studies? I hear you're a master's student. I am. Sure. It's 
I think it's a significant part of my studies. I've learned so much here, and when you travel, you really get to, to work with other people who are different from you um, and learning their culture. And when I go home, I feel like my work with the students that I'll have there will change because now I have an understanding of, of what it's like um, coming from a different background or coming from a place where I may not understand um, your culture. And it really opens the mind so you can work much better with people you, you're not familiar with. Okay, let me get back to you now, Miriam. Now, you, you, you have had the opportunity to come to Ghana four times, I mean, still with speech therapy and the like. What are the successes you can say your, uh, your ex this exercise has told? Well, you know, um, each year when we bring a group of students, we try to teach a skill to teachers or to parents that the following year when we come back, they've gained that skill and then they demonstrate to us that they've learned it and they've continued with them. So we've had, um, we, for example, one school we taught children who cannot talk and how to go to the market and how to communicate with, children, with the people who are selling with pictures. And this year when we went to the market, they all knew the children with disabilities and the children have been going to the market the year that we've not been here through the, the year. So we know that they are using the skills that we've taught them and have been practicing them. Now, can these problems be cured? You have a child, you give birth to a child, you just stigmatize so much, you know, I'm going to live with this disabled child for a long time. But a lot of times, African mothers and fathers believe that, look, when I take this child to a pastor or something, and the child is made to take some concoctions or the like, the child can be healed. From your, the exercise you run them through, the therapy you take them through, is it possible that at age 15, 20, this child can be cured? You know, we, I can't tell you if they can be cured, but we've seen a lot of improvements. The children that we saw last year and this year are talking so much better. There are children who before couldn't read and who are reading better, or children who weren't participating in society and are now participating. And it's the work of the parents and the teachers. And um, I can tell you that for sure it gets better, and there, for sure there's improvement, and, but that needs, you need help from both the parents and the teacher. Definitely, you need help from both parent and teacher. Well, many thanks for joining us. Well, Miriam Baigori is a clinical director, teacher, college, Columbia University. Many thanks for coming through. And then Christine Lam, a student. She's also taking her master's. We appreciate you coming Thank to you. Ghana. We look forward that, well, when you have even gone back, you still look for Ghana as a destination. Oh, of course. But many thanks for Thank coming you. into Thank the studio so as well.